Hi everybody, my name is Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Nicole. I'm Eli. And I'm Jason. And we got Yahoo and the Tour YouTube channel. And we thank you guys so much for joining us. We thank you guys so much for spending a small time in your day to learn what we have in store. We are in Deuteronomy now. We are heading out of the Torah. We are almost finished with this series of the finding the Torah commands in the in the books we are doing it in. And we are in chapter 18 of Deuteronomy. Yep, and we are in month six, day three of the week. And the 16th day of this month is where we are at. All right, gentlemen, you've had a couple days since the big testing. How are you guys doing? You have an A day or so. Everyone feeling okay? Yeah. Jay's over there yawning as he's trying to... I'm still tired. It's still like a really hard to like... Recovery mode. It is, it is hard, right? And these are these are some things you guys have never experienced is this kind of sleep deprivation. Mm -hmm. And I knew when we went into this uh, trial by fire, I knew it was going to be a hard one for us. And I knew that we would make it out and i knew that we probably wouldn't make it out without a whole bunch of tears and well we did make it out but it was as i thought and unfortunately it is what it is and um how's everything how's your faith well good. i think it's good how's your faith i mean how, how, this is you we prayed and we prayed and we prayed and we prayed that our little cow would get better and would walk again and it didn't how's your faith uh, the same. Same. If y'all's will. Y'all's will. Nobody is. Nobody's angered. Nicole, are you angry? I was at first. Are you still angry? No. Nicole didn't understand it, and that's what she. Uh, you know, the, that's that's the power of Yah's hand, right? And I guess we could go back to Abram, right? When Abram was had to <laughs> execute his son, right? That was his. That was his thing, and his wife didn't know anything about it, and so. That is one of those things, and he, that would be something that, obviously, if I told you, Nicole, that uh, Yah wanted me to um, sacrifice one of our kids, it's something you would never, ever let be done. You would freak out, and that's why um, Abram didn't really tell his wife and, and nothing new. And she actually died from that. She died out of sadness for this whole thing on that. So, Nicole is dealing with things, but we are learning, and we are very, very happy that we are still here. And that Yah did provide what he provided, and he, he's a comforter, right? And he will, he will bring closure. He will bring things, and things we don't understand, we're, we may not understand. And sometimes we are not privy to things. We cannot see the future, the bad things that can happen to us and the, in the moment, and it changes our lives forever. We don't know why, but in the future, we look back on it, and we, there's always that look back moment where you look back and go, oh, that's why. Had this not happened, then this wouldn't happen. Had this not happened, then this wouldn't happen. And so there's always a reason, right? And, and as humans, we can't understand this. And what we can't do is we cannot blame Yah when he chooses not to allow things to happen. And sometimes things have to die for his glorification. And this is where we are at. And he will be glorified and he will always be lifted up in this house, regardless of whatever happens, um, regardless of humans living and dying, regardless of animals living and dying. Um, regardless of it all, we will celebrate and we will praise Yah through everything, and we will never ever we will never ever be unfaithful, and that's what he's looking for. He's looking for faithful people who are willing to um, deliver and stay with him through thick and thin. And you know he said it in in the scriptures, right? Why why is bad things happen? Well, sometimes they happen to be tested, to be proved, and and so we have to come through the trial by fire, and we might get a little burned. We might have a little some ashes on us and some you know some scars and things of that nature, but that's what why they call it a trial by fire, right? It wouldn't be called a trial by fire um, if you didn't get burned along the way. So we are in Deuteronomy 18. Everyone else okay? Eli, how you doing? Good. Good. We've uh, made some major successes with our big cows. We added bells to everybody, and so uh, the days of Eli getting owned by the big cows running off throughout the jungle are over, and hopefully, and we. Uh, we're just making forward progress as a family, and so that is that is where we are at. Thank you guys very much. Our digital family that is out there, um, I don't say it too much, but I, I I don't say it enough. But I we love you guys. We really really appreciate everybody out there, the people that are supporting this channel and that support us by by the love and by the comments, by by being part of this. And and you know we are not exact in all this stuff and in fact nicole and i were struggling yesterday when we were trying to dial these commands in and um, she told me i picked and choose and so i'm like tell me wife tell me why this is why am i picking and choosing and we were dealing with um commands that are are really good commands 
But because we don't have a king in the land and because we don't have a place that Yah chooses that we would do this stuff, there, even though it's a really good command, we can't keep it. And so that's what Nicole is keeping me focused on that. And I, like I told her, I'm like, I'm good with all of these commands. I'm good with going to the land right now. I'm good with killing the witches, warlocks, and all these people. I'm good with booting uh, people out who bring up other Elohims. I, I'm, I'm down with that. But we're trying to focus right now on the laws, statutes, and commands that we as people in captivity can uh, keep. And so, you know, we do, we do add some things that are, you know, like kill the witches and things like that. And we put asterisks by them so you know that even though it's in a Torah, and, and I mean, even when I say it, like even though it's in the Torah, that is everything, right? It is in the Torah. It should be gospel. But unfortunately, we have all been hauled off into captivity, and here we are at the end of 6,000 years, and we're all waking up and coming and understanding that we are Yah's creatures and creations, and that we are to be serving Him in, in such a fashion. And so, let's begin Deuteronomy 18, and let's see what we can figure out. The priests, the Levium, and the, all the tribe of Levia shall have no part nor inheritance with Yashrael. They shall eat the offerings of Yahuwah made by fire and his inheritance. Therefore shall they have no inheritance among their brethren. Yahuwah is their inheritance, as he has said unto them. And this shall be the priest's due. This shall be the priest's due from the people, from them that offer a sacrifice, whether it be an ox or sheep, and they shall give unto the priest the shoulder and the two cheeks and the maw. Stomach. You guys say maw? No, The NIV says the shoulder, the internal organs, and the meat from the head. The meat from the head. That wow. says the stomach. Yeah, NIV says meat from the head. Your guys just say stomach? Mm -hmm. Who would want the stomach? That can't be right. What would they? What would the priest do with the stomach? And the internal organs. The internal organs and the meat from the head, right? I don't think... You guys say two cheeks? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The internal... And so instead of... It says the sheep, the shoulder... So the shoulder and then the two cheeks are internal organs. That can't be. What would the priest do with the internal organs? They would burn them. They would burn them, but is is this is, I mean, this is what the priest, it says the priest do. This is what you give him. Why would you give him some stuff that he has to take over and burn? He, this is not useful to him. Yeah, I don't think he'd eat that. He, he's, who's going to eat the internal organs? I mean, we. Should, I don't think it's a good idea. Maybe liver. I don't think you should be eating liver, man. That is a, I mean, I know everybody does, and I know for anybody that's ever eaten liver, it is the most disgusting meat ever, and people love it, though. But it is a bodily functioning organ that is supposed to cleanse us of stuff, and toxins live like somewhere. Toxins. Yeah, and so I, I don't know so much as that is, is edible. I'm, sh I'm sure people, nobody has died from them, but um, I, I'm just trying to figure this out. And the meat from the head, the meat from the head, there's meat on the head, right? Um, there's all sorts of meat on the head, uh, but I mean, you would have to scrape. It They'd would be eat the tongue, maybe the tongue, maybe, I don't know. And what would they do? I mean, do they give him just the chunk of head, a cow's head or something? And then they have to carve it up. I don't know. I don't know how any of this would go, but, um, the internal organs, I can't see that as being useful, but I don't know. Maybe that maybe we haven't figured out how to use internal organs or something. All right. Four, the first fruit also of your grain of your wine and of your oil and the first of the fleece of your sheep shall you give him. Okay, so this is something new as well. So we've never heard that he gets fleece from the sheep. So this is something good, right? That's how they make their clothes. How they make clothes, how to make all sorts of stuff, right? Bedding, I'm sure they make all sorts of stuff out of the, the fleece. Five, for Yahuwah Eloheka has chosen him out of all your tribes to stand to minister in the name of Yahuwah, him and his sons forever. Okay. Going back to that question I had to you guys, would you, which tribe would you want to be? And we all decided that we didn't want to be part of... Uh, Cade said he'd be a part of Levi. Um, but everybody else didn't want to be part of Levi because they didn't want to kill the animals. If you were only there to minister to the people and you had other people to kill the animals, would you be part of Levi or would you not? Jade? Yeah, probably. I mean, as long as I'm not killing the animals... Okay, well, what about back in the days when you actually had to kill for your own food? Like, like they back in these days, right, there were no supermarkets. Right. There was no anything. As a man of the house, if they wanted to eat, they would go and kill their animal and eat. So you're still going to be killing animals to some degree. Maybe not as much, but it's going to be part of a lifestyle, right? Especially a small lamb, right? Your, your small lamb is only going to feed you guys for a few meals, if that, and then you're going to have to do it. And there's no refrigerators as well. So this is... Um, Live food is, is how this was. Eli, Levi um, or not? 
Probably, if I don't have to kill all the animals like every single day. Wouldn't it be an honor to minister for Yah like this and yeah. to, to do all this? Um, yeah, I mean, this is the, this is cool. So, I don't know. I, I don't know if I would still be. I, I think I'd be probably better fit in, in Yahuda. Nicole, what would you be? Would you still be a wife of a, a Levite? Probably. Because you wouldn't have to deal with any of that stuff. You would just support your old man who came in probably you know, with just, tears. I have to cook it. Tears in his eyes after he killed more animals. All right, so we are at six. Yep. 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 All right, and if a le levy come from your gates, come from any of your gates out of all Yashrael where he sojourned, and come with all the desire of his mind into the place which Yahuwah shall choose, then he shall minister in the name of Yahuwah Eloheinu, as all his brethren the Levium do, which stand there before Yahuwah. They shall have like portions to eat beside that which comes of the sale of his patrimony. Patrimony, I don't know what this is. Uh, sale of his family possessions. Okay. He is to share equally in their benefits. Okay, does anyone know? It's also know? reference to Jeremiah 32, 6 through 15. Jeremiah 32. Uh -huh. We haven't made it there yet. Um, 32, wow. Jeremiah 30, 31 is the new covenant. So 32 is probably something awesome. Okay. Nine. When you are coming to the land which Yahuwah Eloheka gives you, you shall not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. And so Nicole and I kind of went over this this morning. That is a command. Nicole, yep. do you have that? Um, yes, I do. Okay. There shall not be found among you anyone that makes his son or daughter to pass through the fire or that uses divination or, the, or one that practices sorcery or an enchanter or a witch or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer. Okay. And I'd like to bring up um, our, our brother... Tyler. Tyler said at one point he was a, uh, like a sorcerer. Didn't he say a sorcerer? Mm -hmm. And so these are all different things. And those of us who have never like been in things of this nature, um, the question I have is, you know, what is the difference between a uh, divination is, um, that's like soothsaying of some kind. Um, sorcery is one kind of a thing and a chanter is one thing and a witch. All these things are like different things, but they're all very evil or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. Necromancer is somebody that like works with the dead. Um, we know that, necro. Uh, so those are all things, and these are all commandments, right? Mm -hmm. So you should not, and so we have this, Nicole? Yep. Okay. But I was wondering about like the passing the kid through the fire. Would that be through Let's do like it. Mola? Oh, wait, sorry. Would that be like giving your kid to Mola? Well, yeah, that's yeah. What, that was the so whole that thing. Would be, yeah. So well, that would go under that one as yes, well. Yes, right. Don't pay, don't. Don't put your kids through the fire. You're so lucky, Eli. You're lucky we're tour keepers. All right, here we go. Um, <laughs> run. Uh, run, kids, run. Um, for all these things, for all these things are an abomination to Yahuwah, and because of these abominations, Yahuwah Eloheka drives them out from before you. Okay, so we have all that. You got all those because we discussed that this morning. Yep. 13, new commandment. This is for all of you. Everybody here at the table, you right. shall be perfect with Yahuwah Eloheka. How many has already been perfect? We have, yeah, no. So it's not a new commandment, but it's something we all need to remember. And how is it that we are perfect with Yahuwah Eloheka? And yes. the Christians would say, You're, you can't be perfect. You, if you break one law, Jason, you've broken them all. Why are you even trying? Okay, well, how do we be perfect, guys? Uh, By you, not breaking the Torah. You yeah. follow the commands, you'll be obedient. Be obedient to the laws, statutes, and commands of Yah. Okay, 14. For these nations which you shall possess, hearken unto sorcerers and unto diviners. But as for you, Yahuwah Eloheka has not suffered you to do so. Okay? So all of these people, and, and the nation like right out of the gate that I can think of is North America. That is the, 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 the land of the Satanists, right? And I'm not talking about all of you guys out there who are family who you know, are stuck in Babylon because I, I think if anybody had a choice... They probably would not be stuck in North America if they absolutely had a choice. But if you're looking at the witchcraft, and I, I take it to, it was like three or four years ago, they came up with the After School Satan Club. You guys remember that? Yeah. And it was a big thing, and everybody, and now all the schools have it. Now they have all these men dressed as women going in and teaching the kids how to be normal. Um, and I know we can't say anything on YouTube, right? You can't say anything like that because everybody has gone that path. And it's all abominable to our creator. Verse 15. Yahuwah Eloheka will raise up unto you a, bro a prophet from the midst of you, of your brethren, like unto me, unto him ye shall hearken. Okay, so that is a command, right? If Yahuwah raises up a prophet, 
um, you need to hearken to it, but it also now gives us clarity as to why we need to hearken to it and how we would not hearken to it. According to all that you desired of Yahuwah Eloheka in Korev, in the day of the assembly, saying, let me not hear again the voice of Yahuwah Elohai, neither let me see this great fire any, anymore that I die not. And Yahuwah said unto me, they have, spoken, they have well spoken that which they have spoken. Verse 18, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto you, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require of him. What is he required of him? What, is it, what does that mean? Their soul, I think, I think he's to kill him. I think it's like a judgment, like he didn't listen to like the prophet. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the, the other versions don't have anything like that. It says he will tell them everything I command them, Excuse me. Oh, oh, that's what he's saying. I will require it of him, which he shall speak. Because the prophet is telling them what he's required to speak. Okay, I get it. Anyone else understand that? Yeah. yeah. yeah I think so. Are you just saying yes? No, I got it. It's like, so basically it's the prophet. So the prophet doesn't like say what he's supposed to say. Then you know, whoever will, will, will like, judge the prophet. Right. Got it. Okay, 20. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other Elohim, even that prophet shall die. Okay, so Nicole, we got that. Yep. We got how to do this, and I remember what was that girl's name on YouTube? The one that everybody thought was a prophet. Celestial. Celestial, yeah. Everybody thought this chick was a, a prophet, but she does not use Yah's name or Yahusha's name right. Everybody still says Jesus. Everybody still says God. Nobody. I mean, if a if a prophet is being raised up among us, would they at least have the right names? Would they? You would think so. I mean, is it okay because maybe everyone knows him as God and Jesus and, and, you know, and I'm not saying God and Jesus are the same person. We just went over that and there's a huge, uh, <laughs> they burned me at the cauldron yesterday, but I spoke the truth that the Trinity is a, a, it's a lie. It's a whole thing is a lie. It's, it's from the Catholic church and it's, it's absolutely abominable. Okay. 21. And if you say in your heart, how shall we know the word which Yahuwah has not spoken when a prophet speaks in the name of Yahuwah, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which Yahuwah has not spoken. But the prophet has spoken it presumptuously, you shall not be afraid of him. Okay, and that's the thing I found out with that, that strange thing with Celeste, or whoever it was that, that poses as a prophet. And she may be a prophet, I don't know. But she tells stuff that is already, like, obvious. They're like, well, Russia's going to come destroy everybody, or something of the sort, or... You know, she keeps saying all this stuff, and I guess if Russia doesn't come and destroy North America, I guess she is a complete fraud. And um, But she makes these things kind of cryptic in the way that she speaks them. I don't listen to her anymore. Um, she just doesn't use the right names. It doesn't jive me right, but she might be. I don't know. Uh, but if it doesn't come to pass, then we should absolutely kill her. <laughs> I hate to say it. It says the prophet should die, and I know those are hard words. Nobody wants to hear it because nobody wants to be the guy that... Uh, takes care of business, but I will be the first guy to take care of business when that time comes. If, if we are in the land and we see great evil, I am totally down with burning the witches and burning the prophets that are liars. Okay. Um, anyone else have anything? Uh, tonight is Spanish Youth 3 all. Tonight is Spanish Youth 3 all. Please, uh, if you guys know anyone that speaks Spanish, we are trying to get to this and trying to get uh, that built up so that the Spanish folks are able to hear the words of Yah and the Torah and things of that nature. So, um, that's about it. I don't have anything else. Anyone? Uh, yeah. Study your Bible. Yeah, all right. Anyone have any good advice? Anything? Parting words? Um, if you're looking for any prophecies, it's already in the book. If people, if you're questioning whether it's true or not, you need to weigh it against the Bible. Yeah, weigh, weigh it against the Bible. We have a lot of prophecies in the Bible. A lot of them are coming true as we speak. A lot of them are, um, it, we, you know, we are the end times. So um, keep alert. Keep your eyes to the skies. Keep your head and your heart and your mind and your soul and everything you have in the word of Yah. Seek him where he is able to be found. Seek the kingdom first and all the righteousness. So there is a way that seems right unto a man, but it only leads to death. And so if we are thinking the laws, statutes, and commands of our creator are gone and on the cross, that is a, that's, that's a, a very bad place to begin. And hopefully uh, for those listening to this channel, you guys are able to break through that indoctrination and seek the kingdom. All right. Thank you guys very much. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. All right. All right. Shalom. Shalom.